In today's A-level IB biology video, we're going to be talking through all the parts of the male reproductive system, just like I did in the previous video, which was all to do with the female reproductive system. So here we have a front-on view of the male reproductive system. Let's start with the bladder. Now, the role of the bladder is to store urine. So it's not really part of the reproductive system, but it is very close, which is why I'm mentioning it. Now, remember that the kidney is responsible for producing the urine and the urine drains from the kidney to the bladder via the ureter. How does urine exit the body? Well, it exits along a single tube known as the urethra. And unlike the female urethra, the male urethra transports two substances, both urine as well as semen. So effectively, both sperm and urine pass out of the urethra in the male. So now it's really time for us to talk about the nuts and bolts of the male reproductive system. So starting with the testes. Now, the role of the testes is to produce sperm and testosterone. Now, testosterone is really important because it causes male secondary sexual characteristics, and we'll talk about what those are in the next video. Attached to the testes is a small coiled structure known as the epididymis, and the role of the epididymis is to store sperm until it's ready for ejaculation, which is effectively when sperm enters the female vagina. The vas deferens then becomes important. This has a second name known as the sperm duct, and as you would imagine, it's a tube responsible for transferring sperm from the epididymis to the urethra. So it transports sperm from the epididymis to the urethra. Now several glands have to contribute extra fluids in order to form the full semen, and those glands are known as the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle. So what do both of these glands do? Well, the prostate gland secretes an alkaline fluid which is added to the sperm at the start of the ejaculation and this alkaline fluid is needed to help the sperm to swim. It's added to sperm at the start of ejaculation and it's needed to help the sperm swim. Next up, the seminal vesicle. This also secretes an alkaline fluid at the start of the ejaculation, but this fluid contains proteins and what that does is make the semen sticky, which is important for helping that semen stick to the inside of the vagina and it contains proteins needed to make the semen sticky. So back to our summary, we've talked about the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle. Let's now look at the scrotum. This is a sac of skin used to hold the testes effectively outside of the body. Why is that needed? Well, it lowers the temperature and a lower temperature is needed for the development of the sperm. Now the penis contains erectile tissue that becomes enlarged and hard. That's necessary to allow the penis to, to penetrate the vagina so that semen can be ejaculated as far up the vagina as possible near the cervix. So we're going to write several things here. Contains erectile tissue, becomes enlarged and hard, penetrates the vagina, deposits sperm close to the cervix. And this is all to make sure that that sperm is as close to the site of fertilization as possible, which remember from the previous video is within the fallopian tube. So if you can deposit that sperm close to the cervix, it can swim through the uterus all the way to the fallopian tube where the egg will be waiting. Just to touch on the word ejaculation, that's simply a process whereby the sperm is deposited inside the vagina. You may also see some diagrams which label the foreskin. This is some excess tissue which is used to protect the head of the penis.